Hi everyone, so I'm giving my Skywatcher 12 inch Dobsonian telescope a bit of a clean and a bit of a wipe down on the surface today and being very careful with the camera. One of the things I want to do is give that mirror a bit of a clean um, because it's getting it's starting to get a little bit messy. I lasted it around about two years ago. Um, I'm not sure whether you can see it in that particular picture, but down at the bottom, because I'm being very careful not to drop it, there's a lot of dirt on that mirror. So in order to gain access to the mirror, what we've got to do is remove a series of screws, um, Phillips head screws around the edge, spider there, um, around the edge. And then this old tube assembly will pull out. This one's fairly straightforward. So what I'm gonna do now is remove the tubing mechanism just to show you the rear mirror cell with the mirror included in it. So we've removed the screws, there was just six of them, and now we can see the mirror. Now, being very careful not to drop my iPhone onto that mirror, you can see what dead little tiny bugs, and generally it's fairly mucky. So what we're gonna need to do is remove these brackets, and that will allow the mirror to literally just pull out and then we can take it into the house and into the kitchen sink and we're going to give it a wash so all we've got to do is remove those six screws being extremely careful with the screwdriver near the surface of the mirror we don't want any mishaps with the screwdriver going down the side of the mirror do we now that would be a bad day so let's get the mirror out of the cell and then we're going to give it a clean so i've removed these uh, clamps and you'll see that they are a kind of a metal on the top and a rubber at the bottom it's the rubber that grips the surface of the mirror and just to emphasize that they do not grip it very tightly at all all these do is just lightly touch the mirror just to keep the mirror in place. We do not want to be really torquing these screws because otherwise they will introduce something called pinch error into the shape of the mirror. Remember, the mirror is ground and polished to an extremely accurate curve and then it's aluminized on top. So what we don't want to be doing is tightening this, these screws down and introducing a distortion on the surface of the mirror. So that's the mirror now released. What I'm now going to do is take the mirror off and I'll quickly show you underneath the, the mirror cell. Okay, so we've now got the, pulled the mirror out of the cell and what you'll see are these kind of felt pads around 120 degrees and there is also a little screw there that just nips against the plastic, you can, can you see? It just nips the mirror into the cell but it's all done with a very light degree of torque. So very straightforward to take out. It's taken me about five minutes to disassemble the telescope so far to get this far. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get that mirror in the kitchen sink and we're gonna give it a clean. Okay guys, so now I've got the mirror in the kitchen sink. Just put it down there quite carefully. Now, just to reassure people who are a bit concerned about doing this, these are pretty robust things, right? As long as you follow a few sensible precautions, you're not gonna hurt the mirror, you're not gonna hurt it at all. As long as you're careful, you're methodical, and you are careful where your screwdriver is pointing at all times. Don't be, be tempted to be you know, on a telephone call at the same time that you're trying to remove the mirror. So here we are with the mirror in, in the sink. The first thing we're gonna do, just from the cold water tap, is just to pour some water on it and just gently just let it run for a, just let it run for a few minutes yeah in fact, just soak it make sure the mirror is completely soaked this is just ordinary cold water straight from the tap just let it just swirl it around a little bit like this you know don't get the tap going full on on, on the mirror by any you, you don't want to any risk whatsoever but you know just swirl it around like that for a bit and just leave it to stand for about four or five minutes 
And the idea of that is it will soak off some of that dirt. Now while that's doing, um, you will note that I've removed anything from the sink that could be knocked into the sink and damage the mirror. I've removed anything that's metallic or anything that could be dropped accidentally into the sink. What you'll see is I've got some um, washing up liquid for crockery. In, in the UK there's many many different ver ver versions of this. This one's called fairy liquid and I've got some distilled water. This is just general detergent for, for home use for washing dishes and crockery and that's distilled water. You can get this off eBay, it doesn't cost a lot. Um, you can also use re re reverse osmosis water as well. Um, this literally, I've got about, how many is it? about two litres I think is in there. Um, sorry, five litres actually. That cost me about, I think it was about three pounds, something like that. And I'll probably only use a tiny little bit of that, maybe a fifth of, what, of that. So it costs nothing to do this hardly. So we're gonna let that soak for a few more minutes and then we'll be back. Okay, we've now been soaking for a few minutes. So what I'm gonna do is get some of this detergent and I'm just gonna pour a bit of it on the surface of the mirror. Now, I have previously removed my watch, my, watch, my rings, any bangles that maybe you may have on, any of the, anything of that sort and make sure your hands are really, really clean and you've got no dirt in your fingernails. Then the pads of these fingers are soft and they make a very nice way of being able to clean the mirror. So all we need to do is gently touch. Can you see? I'm just gently touching the mirror. I'm not forcing in any way. I'm just gently touching it. And what I want to do is just slightly agitate this water. Let's put a bit more water on, a tiny bit more water to run on the mirror. Let's gently just agitate the mirror with this, these sods just to soften up. Pat it on. I'm not kind of pressing in any way. I'm not pressing and wiping across or, or forcing down. I'm just agitating this water. Now these are pretty robust things, these mirrors. You know, people tend to kid glove it a little bit and really there's no need to. Let's just get plenty of water and just make sure the mirror is completely covered. Again, notice I'm not wiping. I'm just patting it down. And I'm going to let that soak again for another five minutes or so. So I'll be back shortly. Okay, it's been soaking for five minutes. Let's run again, run the water again. Let's just rub off all of that dirt. Let's tap again. Okay, and then we're going to do this exercise again for a bit more. Again, fairly quick, just put some more on. And just pat it down. Imagine you were touching, if you wear contact lenses, like I do. Imagine you were putting a contact lens in. That kind of force that you put, you wouldn't really be heavy handed, would you, on, your, on the surface of your eye. And it's the same with this. Just it's gradual. Now, because we've already given this a rinse now, we can, with the pads of our fingers, which are really soft, just let, gently start to agitate this around a little bit. Yeah, just to agitate it a little bit. Let the wall, there's no force being applied here at all. I keep saying that, but it's so important. I'm not putting any force on, them, on my fingers. Just the weight of my fingers themselves are just doing the work. You know, make sure I've got all around a bit more water. This, by the way, obviously you saw my, this is a Newtonian, Dobsonian type of telescope. 
principle's the same. No matter what type of <laughs> the principle would be the same on the Palomar reflector. The the principle would be the same on um, on the James Webb t Space Telescope. <laughs> Obviously, they would be a lot more careful with that. But in all seriousness, you know this works really really well. As long as you are clean, as long as your hands are clean, and use plenty of water. Use plenty of water. Rinse all the dirt off. Rinse all that water off. Get all the subs off. And I'm going to do this one final time. And I'm not going to bore you by having to get, sit through this a, sec, a third time. So I'm going to do that procedure of um, putting on the uh, detergent once more. And I'll rinse it off. Okay, so tap water in the, certainly in the United Kingdom Midlands, where I live, I live in Nottingham, has a lot of contained minerals in it. Which means if we were to let this dry as, as is, we would kind of have a lot of the minerals that exist in the water would leave themselves deposited on the surface of the mirror. So what we want to do is get our distilled water and just liberally just pour it on the mirror. That's it. That's all we need to do. Then what I'm going to do is tip the mirror up like this. Being careful we don't drop anything and let it dry off. Just let it dry, let most of the water just slide off. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lead the mirror on the side. So I'm going to put my phone down and I'll put it on its side. Kimtech lint free wipes. Brilliant for all things optical. Okay, so one wipe. Once across the diameter, throw it away. Once across the diameter, throw it away. You get the idea. We do not want to be using the same wipe going round and round like this. Once across the diameter, throw it away. You get the idea. Again, there's a bit of water down there on the bottom where it's settling. Carefully, I'm not, no pressure here. Throw it away. These are, they're actually quite expensive in the UK actually. They cost around about six pounds. You can get them on eBay. I think you guys in the United States can get these a lot more cheaply because they're actually made over there. They're made with you guys, but for, in the UK, they're, they're more quite expensive, but I don't care. This is my telescope mirror. So wipe once, throw it away. I'm not gonna keep saying that, don't worry. So. There, nearly done it. There, and there. Right, there's a few minute bits left on it. You can see a few kind of holes in my mirror actually. You can see where someone before, as I said earlier, who didn't look after the telescope as well as what I've been doing, I've got it dirty. That doesn't matter. Yeah. It, People really think that, you know, these surfaces need to be completely perfect and they don't. Yeah, we need to look after it and we need to take care and do the best we can. But look, look how much better that now looks. It's super. Let me get, the, let me get it down on flat on the um, surface of the draining board and we'll have another look. And here we go. Look. So much better. It's so easy. This there really isn't any reason to have filthy optics. Now, this that said, that doesn't mean to say I'm repeating this procedure every you know every week. I last did this two years ago. Suffice it to say that you know these things are pretty robust, and your views are not going to really be that spoiled by just slight dirt on the surface it, it'll be okay but it was getting a bit filthy before again one of the important points I can't look at the waste well not waste look how many of these I've used I use about 30 look that mirror costs two three hundred dollars four hundred dollars pounds this costs a, f a few dollars 
and there are 200 or whatever in there, 280 of them in there, a few wipes does not matter. Wipe once, bin, yeah? We do not want to get any dirt on that wipe and then be rubbing it around the surface of the mirror. So I am very pleased with that, that's come out really nice. Now I'm gonna put it back in the telescope. Back at the, back at the telescope. One of the things I'm gonna do at some point is upgrade the springs. Can you see the springs are, it's difficult for me to do this, I'm holding the mirror in one hand. Look at that now. Look at that bad boy. Spotless, almost. I'm gonna upgrade the springs in the, at the bottom that, that um, are used to collimate the telescope. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put the mirror back in the same orientation that it was when I took it out. So let me do that and I'll be back. There we go. I'll put it back in the same orientation so I could see the previous marks. Then all we need to do, lift these up, the rubber down first, and then what we're going to do is uh, screw these down. And again, I repeated this when I took the mirror out earlier on. We This just needs to very lightly pinch the surface. No really torquing these screws down. They just need to touch, just to touch the surface and then we've done okay so let me do that and i'll be back just to show you i've done three of them being very careful with the screwdriver above this mirror surface just to give you a demonstration of how tight these are if you look at me now i can look i turn that around and there's hardly any pinch in it only hardly any torque in it at all can you see it ju it's just needing to keep the mirror in place the idea here is not to force the mirror i know i've said this about five times guys but you really don't want to be imparting pinch distortion into the surface otherwise you'll ruin your views okay now, i've noticed that even since doing this it's quite a windy day here at the moment it's my observatory over there it's quite a windy day and there's dust settling on this already so what i'm going to do before i put the tube back on i'm just going to blow the mirror with a rocket blower just brush it down a little bit then we'll put the tube back on so guys this is the mirror now i've cleaned it it's not 100 percent perfect it doesn't matter about being 100 percent perfect what matters is that the main dust and the main dirt is removed from it if i look very very carefully i can just see some tiny dirty marks but it doesn't matter you can see from this video that it's in pretty good condition. Okay, so look stepping away from it. That looks weird, right? <laughs> and then stepping a bit closer. This is a 12 inch or 300 millimeter mirror for a, for a Skywatcher 300 millimeter Dobson, collapsible Dobsonian. And what, while I've got the back of the mirror off, what I'm also going to do, they're the, they're the springs that I was referring to earlier on, you can see. Those springs are compressed by the collimation nuts. And you can upgrade these springs to, to a thicker version. And it helps the telescope to maintain its collimation better. I'm not going to bother cleaning the secondary mirror because that's normally pointing down when, or well, always actually, pointing down when it's in storage and I just saw a little spider on there then get rid of it um, so that doesn't get dirty in the same way that the main mirror does uh, I hope useful. this is an area which concerns some people they get quite scared about cleaning their mirror of the telescope but as you can see it's taken me the whole and that's while I've been videoing this as well it's taken me about literally 10 minutes of work to actually do it as you can see again some of these little marks here i'm not sure if you can see them they're from someone who maybe didn't look after the scope as well as what i've done um so I'm, all in all i'm very pleased with that it's come it's come up okay so i'm gonna put the scope back together and i let know we're done i hope you found the video useful Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and you liked it. Got any comments, put them in the bottom. Again, just to repeat, what did I use? Washing up liquid or deterg household detergent, um, some uh, uh, distilled water or reverse osmosis water is as good. And some those Kim wipes and some 
uh, cheap 100% cotton wool pads that's all you need nothing at all hardly so on that note hope you enjoyed the video guys a um, bit of a long one but hope it gave you some insights how to clean the mirror of your scope all the best then it's clear skies and i'll speak to you soon